So a reminder that it is race to 10 now. It's been nine or in most rounds on the loser side, eight throughout the week. And we'll go up then to race to 11 for the semi-finals and 13 for the final on Saturday evening. A lot of people saying it might be Skylar Woodward's time to be involved in the US Open final and maybe win it. Claim the first real standout title of his career. He's certainly been pretty consistent so far in 2023. He's six matches away from that US Open crown. And he'll start us off. Yeah, it's usually the first break, which is the most troublesome for Skyler. Easy with the adrenaline going to maybe get a little quick and not hit the one exactly how you want. But he's got to be happy there. And that's what I saw in his last match. Even though he's had some struggles after the break, you know, played some nice shots as well. But I saw the break being a very good part of his game. So if he can settle in after the break, like you said, I think he'll be a threat to win this event. We were talking yesterday during his match against Alex Pagalion about the fact that certainly this year, even when he's been doing so well, there have been a lot of matches he's been slow to get started in. And then as he gets deeper into the match, he seems to zone in a bit more and find his best. Yeah, going to go aggressive here, trying to come two rails between, between the three and eight. And maybe a little fortunate with the miss. Not really leaving much, and we're just going to get our first look at Kien. I think only one American has played so far, and that would be Oscar Dominguez, who did pull out a victory and on to that final 32. Yeah, nine Americans in the final 64, more than any other country. Yeah, and I think there's some, some incredible matchups for him. Chris Reinhold now playing Darren Appleton. Billy Thorpe just teed it off with Fetter Gorst. I think one to look at later, B.J. Ussery and David Alcady. Kind of similar players in a sense. Very good tactically, very much grinders. Oh, he caught that thick. He's going to need some help. Like the first two ball shot, nothing easy, but if you can get this one down, position's pretty natural coming across. It can do a lot for you mentally early. Dote Kien is number 212 in the world rankings, but that reflects a lack of participation in events more than anything else. Got some points in the recent event in Connecticut where he got to the last 16 earlier this month. Yeah, I know a few of the Vietnamese players, but I don't know a ton about Kien. Of course, I've seen his name before. And of course, you can't accidentally get in this final 64, so definitely some quality. Yeah, he's been around a while. He actually got to this stage of the World Championship as long ago as 2012. Had a number of decent runs at the China Open in the years which followed that. And he was in the quarterfinals of the World Championship back in 2019, beaten by Ko Ping Chung. Looks of a player like most of the great players, just kind of keeping it simple, taking what the table will give you. The thing is, with the tables, you got to pay attention to all these. No hangers, not one bit. One of three players from Vietnam who've made the final 64. Win An Tam plays Victor Zelinski later. And Paul Nam Pam. On the brink of a big win and a place in the last 32. Currently leading the World Masters champion, Ko Pin Yi, 9-5. Yeah, I was keeping an eye on him and his brother's score. They both trailed. It seems Ko Ping Chung has made a big comeback. We'll keep you updated on those scores. But 
in a great position here to finish the first rack and get our first look at Ken breaking the balls. Not a whole lot to do here. With the eight near, you have options. Just don't get too steep on the seven. You don't want to make the seven a missable ball. You probably wanted a hair more angle there, Michael, but should be very workable. He's beaten some good players already this week. In fact, his very first match was against Canada's John Mora, and he beat him 9-4. Followed that with a win over Alex Montpellier of France. Lost to Janioski in winner's qualification, but then on the loser side, got the one win he needed there against JJ Fall of South Africa. Yeah, you can tell a little different queuing action overall, a little more uh, kind of movement with the back arm. Watch the back elbow. This is a good good look at it, kind of how it goes a little inside. But then once he delivers the cue, everything straightens out nicely. So efficient stuff in the opening rack. So take in, takes his chance well and leads Skylar Woodward 1-0. I mentioned there that Dotekien started his campaign by beating John Mora. Well, Mora then made it through to single elimination via the loser's side. And now that he's here in the last 64, he's well placed to go further because he's 5-0 up now against Roland Garcia. Omar Al-Shaheen, former world championship runner-up, has a 5-4 lead over Mieszko Fertunski. Fedor Gorst. 3-1 ahead of Billy Thorpe. Chris Reinhold leading Darren Appleton 3-2. Pong Nam Pan 9-6 up on Kopinyi now. Noyuki Oi leading Fitham Haradinaj 3-0. Koping Chung on the hill now against Alex Kazakis at 9-8. Oliver Shonoki has won the 15th rack to lead Pius Labutus 8-7. And Marco Teutcher who sent Shane Van Bonin over to the loser side yesterday as a 9-5 lead over Vitaly Patsura, who was runner-up to Tyler Steyer in the recent Texas Open. Yeah, good look at Ko Ping Chung, that long two ball. Of course, there's all kinds of work left in this rack, but that long two ball really sets him up. And now in a great position to clear the table and Make a pretty big comeback. It seemed like he was down two, three, four games most of the match. Caught him at eight. And now on the hill. Coping Chung, semi finalist here last year. I was kind of curious, and of course that may be by design, but. Just with his cue action, how much power he could really get into the break. So it wasn't one of the more firm breaks. But he did get the one down. Unfortunately, the cue ball went with it. Looks like a rematch of our earlier rounds. Going to tee it off here shortly on table two. Sanjin Pelovanovic and Tyler Steyer. Sanjin uh, really put a, a cooking on Tyler there uh, in that winner's qualification round. It was a very lops lopsided score line. Yeah, 9-2. Now, after a couple little opening misses on the two, talk about it all the time. Ball and hand will make you shake that off quickly. So a nice layout here for Skyler to get, you know, a few swings in early and a very comfortable rack to get on the board. And you can see Ko Ping Chung there, who we were looking in on, trying to close out that match. There is another repeat match, actually. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz playing Mickey Krause. They've already met in this tournament. Yeah, Mickey really showed some, uh, some nice matches early and, of course, took a f defeat from from FSR, but I think that had a lot to do with FSR, really. Seems Mickey may be playing his best pool at this 2023 U.S. Open. Let's 
see the split screen and really what looks like one big shot away drawing the cue ball in this purple five. Both the players actually, but Ko Ping Chung to try and win the match. I'll tell you what, got to be impressed with Ko Ping Chung. He just gets stronger and stronger as the tournament goes on. All right, I kind of like floating two rails around this seven right here. He's going to come one rail, I think, which is fine as well. Oh, no, he came two. What happens there is you don't have to baby the ball as much because the English and, and the path of the cue ball kind of chews up a little real estate for the cue ball, and you don't have to ease it as much as coming one rail off the six. Oh, you kind of squeeze that one home. I can see Ko Ping Chung on your right in a great position on the eight and nine. I'll tell you, I haven't seen Alex Kazakis really play anything poorly this this tournament, so I'm sure it was just taken away from him. On the main table, Do take in, scratched off the break. Skylar Woodward did the rest, so that one has won all. And Ko Ping Chung is now through. It's all over at 10-8 against Alexander Kazakis. He went all the way to the quarterfinals here last year. You mentioned Ko Ping Chung continuously improving. He's now overtaken his brother Ko Ping Yi in the world rankings and is now in the top ten. Okay, so that's another winner added. And Ko Ping Chung goes through to play Jeff DeLuna in a clash of players who've both been in the semi-finals of the US Open in recent years. John Mora has stretched his lead to 6-0 over Roland Garcia. Omar Al Shaheen and Mieszko Fortunski is a different story, though. All level at five each. Fedor Gorst now 4-1 ahead of Billy Thorpe. Chris Reinhold just one ahead of Darren Appleton at 3-2. Kong Nam Pam, as I was saying, 9-6 up on Ko Ping Yi. Mayuki always a 4-0 lead over Fitham Haradinaj. And it's 8-all now between Oliver Shalnocki and Piers Labutis, the Lithuanian drawing level once again. Vitaly Patsura still holding on, 9-6 down against Marco Teutcher. And some of those less familiar names you're seeing there, the players involved in the SVB Junior event. We should be seeing some action from that at some point over the next couple of days. Yeah, it's sweet for those juniors to be able to be right next to the best players in the world. Get to rub some elbows, make some memories. Skyler Woodward has been one of the very best in 2023, and he breaks in the third rack. And I caught the one a little thick, it looked like maybe, I don't know, and it's going to give up a pretty good shot. A little cluster on the bottom rail with the five and the seven, so we'll see how Kian deals with this opening shot and then some problems down the road. Mentioned there that Jeff DeLuna will be playing Ko Ping Chung. We have two other confirmed matchups for the last 32. Later today, Joshua Filler will be playing Mark Boisterbosch. He's just had that dramatic win on this table. And Max Lechner will be facing Oscar Dominguez. up on the swing there and almost always comes with an overcut especially when you're using a little outside English pretty doable kick across the corner I think that's the way he's got to go you got to kick across it you can lay the one up the side rail you're not probably going to get a snooker I think he's a favorite to make this kick shot this will have a little speed on it Not so natural, but he could come off his right side of the two, kind of draw to the side rail and try and tuck the cue ball underneath the purple five. It's not terrible. I mean, shooting at the two, you got problems with the five and getting position just period on the red three is going to be very difficult. So I feel like a safety's coming.
Tyler Woodward started off with two very comfortable wins against two of his fellow Americans, Charles Carlisle and Robert Shapriniak, both 9-2. Much closer against Alex Pagalion. Didn't get off to a good start. In fact, Pagalion really should have led 6-3, but missed his chance and proved to be a bit of a turning point. Woodward went on from there to a 7-5 lead, and although Pagalion battled to the end, Woodward got it done at 9-7. Yeah, I think what he was worried about there is, you know, coming underneath the five and kind of bumping it open and maybe something bad going you know, wrong and giving up a shot and then taking care of a problem with the 5-7. Again, a little let up there. It was touchy, though. If he can ease this in, he can hold an angle on the three to maybe get at the five seven while playing position on the four. Okay. Nerves may be going for both players at the moment. As like I was saying earlier, Woodward has often started slowly in matches this year. We saw it again yesterday, and don't take he in, has to be in position to take advantage of that, but he's not going to do so, playing shots like that. 30 years of age now, Skylar Woodward, ranked number 15 in the world. He was 41 at the start of the year, so that tells you how prolific he's been at accumulating points this year. And he's going to draw it to the center, trying to gain the angle on the pink four to where Maybe he can get into the brown seven. This looks a little thin to me. Very makeable ball, of course, but I think you just got to knock this in and play a safety off the purple five. I think if you try to get into these, you may miss them and get out of position. Of course, these players are at the table, and they're uber aggressive. That's what makes them so great. Now it looks like he's kind of going to play that safety I talked about, just kind of cinching the four. He'll want to chip this, trying to use the six. Yeah, you can see pointing his cue real natural off his right side of the purple. Coming two cushions and just trying to lay on that rail where his chalk's at, kind of where he looked. Really good control, and that's how you got to hit it. You got to kind of just coast up the table. Don't force it. Kian has played for Vietnam in the World Cup of Pool all the way back in 2012 with Winan Tan. Edged out in a hill hill finish in the first round by Italy. Vietnam actually got to the semi finals of the first ever World Cup back in 2006 and then beaten in the first round in all of their next eight appearances for a much improved performance this year. And Winan Tan and Duong Quoc Quang got within one rack of the quarterfinals. Yeah, well, nice hit there and caught the double kiss trying to come across the purple five and the cue ball come over kind of where it's at now. Tell you, for a double kiss and the five just inches from the pocket, this has not gotten easy, especially with the six up table. So he's got to cut this in, avoid the nine as it comes across. Kind of always knew he was going to get 50-ish on the six. Just the way the five sat. Really can't take the five for granted trying to ease the ball. 
course, you're watching us here, but if you want to go to table two at all and see another American in action against Sanjin Pelovanovic, that's at the Matru Multisport YouTube page. Yeah, the other American you're referring to is Tyler Steyer. It looks like he's about to lose that opener to Pelovanovic, who has a very simple nine ball for the rack. You can get all your live scores of all the tables, including the juniors at matchroompool.com. Better stroke there. Yeah, and of course we'll keep you right up to date with all those live scores here as well. So. No excuse not to be well on top of everything going on here on day four at the U.S. Open. That was a bad miss by Dote Kien. Skylar Woodward powers in the nine to take that one. It was 1-0 down. He now leads for the first time at 2-1. Let's get over to table four. Copin Yi has been battling bravely to turn it around against Pong Nam Pam, the Vietnamese player, still in front, but it's now only 9-8. Copin Yi has a chance here to take it hill-hill. This would be a great one to pull out. I believe that was, was it 9-5 maybe? At least, I think, uh... I think he trailed by more than four games early, something like six to one maybe. Or big shot here on the pink four, coming a little across for the five, queuing over the nine as well. Winner of this will play Alexa Pechelsh of Serbia in the last 32 later tonight. shot there on the pink we'll get back with that score possible hill hill coming yeah, and the way Skyler's breaking again if he gets comfortable I really feel like he's a threat I don't think he's you know 100% comfortable right now just kind of knowing him and watching him around the table but he's uh you know grinding his way through these early racks but in a way, isn't that better? Because we've seen him in a couple of big events this year where he's looked like the best player of the week, and then he's not been able to see it through to the end. Maybe if he is going to win one of these, that's the way he's going to do it. Stay in it, stay in it, and then start playing well right at the end. No, absolutely. And he's, this, he's the type of player, I think I talked to you about that with Alex yesterday, to where Alex has such a good brain, and he's real keen on things. Uh, Kind of figures out ways to win matches without his best, expecting his best to show up here eventually. Let's keep one eye on table four once again. Looks as though this one is going the distance. Fight back continues there. Copenhagen will be breaking in the deciding rack. Yeah, them players never give up, and he fell. I thought a little funny here, but it looks like he can just stun one rail out. He has two pockets for the six, so don't get too much angle on the on the five. Just keep it simple. Yeah, I was referring there to couple of big events of this nature where Woodward has looked like his time might be coming this year. Semi-finals of the UK Open and Nathan Catchy just blasted out of the traps and Woodward made a bit of an attempt to catch up with him but finished 11-5 and was then beaten by the same score in the semis of the Spanish Open by the eventual winner Dang Jin Hu and everything looked to be pointing to a Woodward title that weekend. He'd beaten Ko Pinyi 10-0 in the previous round. And just looked to be playing so well. So many big names had gone out early. And it wasn't to be.
Yeah, not much sign of that recent tendency for slow starts to matches here. Woodward looks very focused and dialed in from the start. There's two balls away. From completing the first break and run of the match. Three racks in a row for Skylar Woodward. He's too clear of Do Te Kien in the last 64 of the US Open. High times for Marco Teutcher. He's recently won that world ranking counting event in Adelaide in Australia. He's beaten Shane Van Boning here at the US Open this week. And now he's into the last 32 after a 10-6 win over Vitaly Patsura. He'll now face Alusius Yap. Oliver Shalnocki on the hill now at 9-8 against Pius Labutas. Mayuki Oi comfortable against Fitham Haradinaj. Halfway to victory at 5-1. Chris Reinhold. A real close tussle early on with Darren Appleton. Reinhold leading 4-3. Fedor Gorst continues to pull away from Billy Thorpe at 6-1 now. Mieszko Fertunski, 7-5 ahead of Omar Al Shaheen. Robbie Capito's taken the first against Jeremy Sose. And John Morris still on track for the whitewash. 7-0 up on Roland Garcia. Yeah, and there's a lot of scratches with this new break rule with the cut break and the cue ball coming back across. But when it goes one rail right in the side with no kisses, that's the big regrets uh, from a player. That one's on them. And now Kian a chance with ball in hand. He can make up for a lot of early mistakes. The nice out here, get a little confidence going and get to the breaking end of things. Tricky out though. The four is the tough one. Doesn't go by the five in the lower left, so good thing he has ball in hand on the two. He should be able to get nice on the three and somewhat close to play that tidy position on the pink four. Okay, he left plenty of angle. So it looks like he'll go by the eight and the five and maybe play the pink in the right middle. I think if he tries to kill the ball, he could have a little issue. I guess a little inside English. He can kill the ball one rail between the eight and nine. Concerning signs. It's not just that he's missing balls, but he's playing really bad shots to miss them. Yeah, and I tell you, there's a technique, you know, and one thing you'll notice with Kian, he has very kind of sharp pre strokes, right? And when you do that, especially when the nerves are high, you have a tendency tendency to sometimes decel on the actual swing itself. And I've seen it twice now in just a couple games. And that's the real mistake with the pros, you know, and you see that you've been around golf when the, when the tension's real high, in the majors, they don't get the putt to the hole. And uh, it's the same thing in pool. And of course, Woodward will see some of the shots that his opponent has played and it frees him up a bit. He sees the guy in the other chair struggling like that. Yeah, Woodward taking dead aim on the pink in the side. Tyler Steyer was at the table in rack number two with an open shot. Obviously didn't get it done. Sanjin up 2-0 now. I love seeing this from Schuyler. When he, even though when they're kind of routine, he's just piecing it together. Once you do this, even with the routine shots, you know, everything starts to feel the same. So it's actually the easiest way to start calming the nerves. Now, the one thing a lot of players, you have to get used to that a little bit. At first, it'll actually maybe make you a little more nervous. But, but in the end, it's, it's a good thing usually.
Okay, touchy little shot. Coming to the center of the table to stay above the eight. Obviously can't go too far with the nine near. So here you try to get position as quickly as possible. You don't want to get so close to the eight. Not needed. He's helping himself to what's left over from his opponent's mistakes in the early stages of this match. And that's a big part of why Skylar Woodward now leads 4-1. Daniel Massiol has won the opener against Wu Kun Lin. John Morris 7-0 up on Roland Garcia. Robbie Capito has added the second rack to lead Jeremy Sose 2-0. Mieszko Fertunski also a couple of racks clear but at a much more advanced stage of the match against Omar Al Shaheen. That's 7-5. Sonia Pelovanovic, we've been talking about, leading Tyler Steyer 2-0. Billy Thorpe has got one back, but still well behind against Federal Gorst at 6-2. Chris Reinhold has won rack eight. To now lead Darren Appleton 5-3. Still no result from table four. Copigny and Pong Nam Pam. That's the match we're looking in on there. On the right-hand side of your screen. In the last rack. Naoki Oi has won the seventh rack and now leads Fitham Haradinaj 6-1. And Oliver Shulnoki still on the hill against Pius Labutas. That one is 9-8. All about Woodward at the moment on table one. He's won four racks on the spin. Yeah, I caught that one a little thin, got the one down. Beautiful kiss on the cue ball to bring it nearer the two. And I'll tell you, watch out for Nayuki Oi. He's been really laying them to waste for the most part in this event. Really hasn't been challenged. And uh, he had a little spell, dry spell, after a great run for seemed like a year, year and a half, making deep in a lot of events. But I think that semifinal in Spain is that where it was, I believe, anyways. Got him back uh, heading in the right direction. Well, Naoki Oi was a semi-finalist here two years ago. And it's only a couple of racks away from getting to the final. Going down to the eventual winner, Carlo Beato. Yeah, it seemed like every big event he played in that year, he was a semi-finalist or a finalist. Never really getting the W, but playing just some awesome pool. All right, touchy little shot here. Just got to command the cue ball. Well, that's a confident strike there going into the nine heavily. Look how much longer the backswing is, and that's a good sign for Skyler right there. You see, it, when he gets a little nervous, it really gets about only an inch or two, it seems like. Played well and done well in so many events in 2023. I told you about those two big semi-final runs, but he's also been performing very well and winning lots and lots of matches in... Slightly smaller, but still significant events here in the U.S. He's been in the finals of three world-ranking counting events here in the States. In the last number of months, almost won the Turning Stone Classic right at the start of the year. A great recovery in the final against Jason Shaw, but just lost out in the last rack. Yeah, that one spread a little more on him than he wanted. So he's got a little more angle, but the good thing is he stayed aggressive, getting a little closer to the six. So now he doesn't have to hit the ball as hard no matter what he's doing. Pocket should be a little friendlier, and he can kill the cue ball if, you know, desired. So again, when you're in good shape, you know, stay aggressive with the position. It's when you're a little out of line is when you got to kind of back it off a bit. Yeah, you see him killing the cue ball nicely. Well, he's doing everything nicely at the moment, isn't he? This is very accomplished stuff so far. And it's going to be another break and run, his second of the match. 5-1 for Skylar Woodward. Looks like he's keen to get on with it. Looks like Kien's going to take a timeout. Maybe we'll pan back over to the Kopi situation. 
Yeah, in that final rack. So, yeah, we can look in there now. You can see John Mora, who's really laying him to waste in his match. Got to believe Roland Garcia ain't got to shoot much with that score. Eight nil now, amazing. Well, I'll tell you, John's been putting in the time, and he's played so many tough, close matches down the end of the tournament with no luck at all. So maybe you never know. It could be the Canadians' time. I think that would be a very popular outcome. Oh, I agree. Really well liked, and if you've ever met him, you'll know why. All right, looks like coping knees in really serious uh, bad shape to continue his event. Yeah, it's been a great effort to keep the match going, take it to the last rack, but it seems it's all going to be in vain. It's not the only hill hill going on at the moment. Pius Labutus has levels at nine each with Oliver Shulnoki. So three Vietnamese players made it to this final 64. One of them well behind on the main table. One of them yet to start. But this one is through. Pong Nam Pam has beaten the World Masters champion, Ko Pin Yi, by 10 racks to 9. A fine result. He'll now play Alexa Peixels of Serbia later today for a place in the last 16 of the US Open. So both players are out of the room. That gives us a chance to look at some other scores there. Ralph Suke in a clash of the ages. The generations with Alban Ocean has won the opener. Chris Reinhold, someone who I know you've been talking about a lot this week, Jeremy, that you think he's due a good run and is trending in that direction. When he's 7-3 up on the former US Open winner, Darren Appleton. Yuki Oi is 6-2 ahead of Fitham Haradinaj. Fedor Gorst 6-3 now against Billy Thorpe. That was 6-1. I think we're going over to table 11. And this is the match between... Oliver Shulnoki and Pius Labutas, who had that great run in Spain, semi-finalist in Lugo. Yeah, it was kind of hard to tell exactly what was going on there, but it seems like in all the big events when Oliver does get knocked out, it seems like it's always hill, hill. But you got to give it to Pius. I mean, he's just improved his game so much. And I think he's improved his game in the big settings so much as well. Very often you see players who are really talented. You know they can play well. But they just need that one big, long run in a tournament to give them the belief to kick on. And if Labutus wins this match, then indications will be good that he has taken that level of confidence from what he did in the Spanish Open in high summer. Well, Skylar Woodward really couldn't have asked for more so far in this match. 5-1. Yeah, I got a little quick there. And it's always the takeaway that sets that up. But I'll tell you, Ken, he's had some chances. Ball in hand in the last, didn't get past the second ball, and then a break and run added from Skyler. Now, not an easy one ball, but certainly doable. If you want to turn it around from a long way behind, this is the sort of chance you need to start making something off. Yeah, he's got to make a nice shot on the one with the, you know, not only keeping focus on pocketing the one, not, not a hard shot for these players. But the cue ball, I think, just naturally into the purple to hold position on the blue two. That looks like the play to me. Could go up and down. Uh, and again, 
the reason why you get the thick hit there, he's, you know, a foot from the ball, a foot and a half. He's not aiming thick. But when you let up, the contact becomes heavy, and now he's lost the line on the cue ball as well. well we saw him ruefully pointing to perhaps where he wanted the cue ball to go. And very quickly, he's left himself with a conundrum to figure out of his own making. Yeah, can't quite get out of his own way at the moment. We've all been there. But watch the pre-strokes, how sharp they are, right? That's not setting you up for the stroke you want to make, really. And that's what really promotes that decel. Now, when he's hitting the ball hard, it's fine because it, you know, kind of sets up for the hard shot. But anything medium or lighter, it becomes very difficult. A little bit of fortune there, as acknowledged by the raised hand. Yeah, Skyler's so savvy, though. He's going to recognize his opponent struggling a bit, right? So he may pull out the jump cue here, trying to jump to the top half of the two. Or any good contact on the two, even the kick with such an open table, you kind of feel like Kian may not get out, or at least at the moment. Like, you know, here, for instance. If he does get a look, it's going to be long and tough. And Do you favor him to do it at the moment? Well, that's it. Nothing takes the pressure off you more than the knowledge that your opponent doesn't look like the sort of player who's going to punish you if things go wrong. Yeah, he's got to make a nice long shot. The two's not easy. I think the angle's okay, but he's got to consider the green six for position. So we'll see. Oh, nice. Really nice shot. Yeah, well, that's completely at odds with so much of what's happened to him in this match. So many elementary mistakes, but this was a fine shot. Yeah, and, you know, whether it be nerves or just, uh, you know, it's such a fine game, it's, it's not, it doesn't take much to be off, whatever it's his struggles today. But, you know, obviously he's a great player and he's been playing great to make this final 64. Getting to the point where, okay, obviously the match won't be over if he loses this rack, but sort of feel from this position, if he does, it's going to be very hard to move on from it. And yet, this is not routine. As I was saying, going to start taking chances like this if he's to turn it around. Feels like we've not been playing long and he's already got a large deficit to try to overturn. Yeah, and that's, you know, as a spectator and commentator, Nothing feels routine for Kian right now, so queuing awkward. He's got to draw back. Speed's got to be good. Like here, he's on the 50 a little. And the seven, the brown seven below the nine, does go to the lower left. But when you start to get out of line on the five, that could affect the six to get on that seven. And things start to kind of snowball on you. Back cutting this in the side, trying to kill the cue ball. But even there, look at the cue ball position, right? So, I mean, of course, when you don't make the ball, the cue ball's not exactly where it would have been, but you could tell there it wouldn't have been a whole lot different. And that would have been a really hard proposition to try and get out shooting the six to get to the seven. Now, I expected Skylar to bank at this here, Michael, unless it just sits a little funny. Well, he sizes that up. Let's look in again on 11. It looks like she'll knock you down on the shot. This is in the... Last rack against Pierce Labutus. And I think that's that. Yeah, the eight isn't on the table, so it's this nine for the match. And now I'm not so sure, is it? Is it Shonoki at the yeah, table? That, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Definitely find, tell his stroke from yeah. a long ways away. I've just seen shadows there, but it is definitely him, so... Oliver Shonoki, former World Championship semi-finalist, 
is into the last 32. Where he will now face Austria's Mario He. Yeah, and two players that have been down there quite a bit on the business end of these big events, and Mario He more than Oliver. But it seems like, you know, Oliver took a little time off there, uh, maybe, you know, almost a year, really, uh, from the big events. But prior to that, it seemed like he was always running deep. I think he had a few wins over SVB, didn't he, in the space of a few months, a couple oh. of years back. Yeah, I think he got beat Hill Hill in that semifinal World Nine Ball uh, whenever Yeah, he was in that semis. He lost Hill Hill. This ball is going to get somewhat straight. He needs a little bounce. Got just enough, I believe. You could see as soon as he shot the seven, he kind of knew he overhit it and was really worried about the cue ball position. Yeah, it wasn't quite Hill Hill that Sean Nocky lost, but uh, as close as you can get to that, 11-9 against Omar Al Shaheen and Milton Keynes a couple of years ago. So half a dozen racks in a row for Skylar Woodward as the nine wriggles in. And in about half of those, Do Te Kien has had his chances, but he's not taking them. And Woodward is running away with this. Tyler Steyer has got one on the board as we look at this nine again. And he's at the table now actually as well with a chance to complete the recovery from 2-0 down to 2-all against Sanyan Pelovanovic. Wu Kun Lin and Daniel Masio level up 1-all. John Morrow on the brink of an extraordinary whitewash over Roland Garcia. It's 9-0. Robbie Capito hasn't lost a rack either, but he's at a much earlier stage of his match against Jeremy Sose. That one's 3-0. Mieszko Fertunski looking for one more to knock out Omar El Shaheen. 9-6 there. Billy Thorpe has won three in a row now, so back to 6-4 behind against Fedor Gorst. Alban Ocean 2-1 up on Ralph Suke. Chris Reinhold really pulling away at 8-3 against Darren Appleton. Nayuki Oi 7-2 up on Fitham Haradinaj. Back to the main table. Yeah, the 8's going to get in the way of a 2-9 combination. And I'll tell you, you know, the way Billy's starting to come into form a little bit, I kind of felt like maybe it's just Fetter not letting him at the table to get that big lead. All those matches now, they're involved in the likes of Thorpe and Steyer and Ussery are absolutely massive because we're now at a stage where every win gets you a decent number of ranking points. That all translates to the Moscone where the race for that final place looks like being so tight in Hanoi the week after next. So all huge matches anyway because they're at an advanced stage of the US Open, but a huge side plot as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been real refreshing to see uh, the Americans all supporting each other as well. Friendly words all the way around, and that's really what it takes. I wonder what he's doing here, trying to draw behind the three, maybe? Oh, he's spinning softly. He's trying to come two rails behind the five, seven. Needs to go a little bit. Pretty well done. places now filled in the last 32. Remember that round will be played later today in the last 16 in the early part of tomorrow, quarterfinals tomorrow night and then down to a single table for the last day of September, the last day of the US Open. Semi-finals back to back and then the final later on. He 
He's jumping this, and can he get all the two jumping at it? You wouldn't want to cut at this ball, jumping it. Maybe he's kicking behind it with the jump cue. how the matches where you most need a little bit of luck to go your way and the ones when you never seem to get it yeah but when you have chances it seems like uh, you know you get punished a little more is he going to try and open the 5-7 right here Michael a little rail first softly oh he missed it now he's going to get out of line on the 3 that's why if you're going to shoot that shot, you have to be willing to shoot it a little lighter, you know, and just try and feel like you're going to bump it. And actually, you get into the 5-7 a little better or a little easier if you hit that shot a little lighter. Could cut at this, though. I mean, he's a shot maker and go into the 5-7, it appears. Maybe the safety coming. Okay, Ken's got to simplify things here and just hold for the bank on the pink four. If he tries to do anything else, I think he makes the three way too missable. He looks very composed and comfortable in the opening rack, but that's you know, the old story. You start to miss one or two, the confidence can disappear very swiftly. Well, like I said, you've seen it in golf in the tough conditions. It can get pretty mental out there once you start to make a mistake or two. Nice shot there, hit the center, center cut of the pocket. Now he's going to be going away from this a little because he has to get out of the double kiss of the bank. So he's got to cut the four a little bit, and the cue ball is going to come downward. Now that's not that big of a problem other than he has to get decent on the purple five to get back on the six. There's a lot going on here. Oh, he's playing the safety. Thought for sure he was setting up for the bank. I think the four does go by the brown seven, the upper left. So I think you will see Schuyler attack with the jump cue. And you saw him looking down there, right? And what he was doing is he knows he snookered by the nine, but he wants to know if the purple five has him partially snookered as well. That way he can figure out how far he has to make the cue ball jump. If it's just a nine, no problem. If he has to go over a piece of both, He's got to put a little more into it. Sanyan Pelovanovic in play on table two with a very good chance to regain the lead there over Tyler Steyer at 3-2, having earlier led 2-0. So you've been watching all week, Michael, and you know our final 64. You know the ones that have been eliminated in the early rounds of the final 64. Who's your kind of unsung kind of player that you feel may make a semifinal or final? Ooh. That's one to hit me with, isn't it? Give me a moment now. Good question. Given that he's 9-1 up, am I allowed to go for John Mora? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And he's clearly yeah. going through to the next round. But yeah. he's someone who, even just from talking to him, you, you like the way he talks and the attitude he seems to have. And we know he's a very good player. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him go on a really long run here. Yeah, I'll tell you something about John Mora. He's got one heck of a chin. You know, he's been through it all. And... 
He's dealt with uh, as much adversity adversity as any player. That ball skidded a little bit. It usually costs you a little speed on the cue ball. He's trying to really get behind the eight, but this will do. But, I mean, not just having to switch hands and do the incredible things he's doing there, but, you know, he kind of went down learning the game and, and losing some matches uh, in hard ways. And, and uh, it'd be awesome to see him make a deep run and maybe even snatch this title. I mean, I just can't begin to fathom how someone could do that, play with one hand their whole life. And then it was because he was having problems with his neck, wasn't it? He yeah. felt that the only way he could continue his career was to switch over. And then you're relearning the game. It, it just seems impossible, but well, he's done it. Yeah, he, you know, a lot of players practice both-handed some. You know, I, I was should have done more of that. but uh, So he obviously could play pretty decent left-handed. But to just mentally think you could do that, uh, let alone the physical side. But, yeah, John is a very left-eyed dominant player uh, like I am, but right-handed. And so he just uh, put a lot of pressure on his neck and had to, had to change some things. He needs a little clip on the six here. He got it, but not enough. Yeah, some people may not be aware. His dad was a very good professional snooker player, played at the Crucible. Yeah, well, he was a pretty darn good nine-ball player as well. Yeah. yeah. I played him twice, I believe. I was 0-2. <laughs> Mario Mora, the man in question. Yeah, mom played as well, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Okay, big, big rack, and it's obvious, but uh, got to get something going here if you're key in. Don't forget, by the way, whenever this one is over, Jason Shaw against Earl Strickland, two former U.S. Open winners. Bit of previous between them, off the table as much as anything. And he will be squaring up whenever this one is completed. Yeah, and during that same match, same time, right on the next table will be SVB and Chang Jong Lin. Well, that's a repeat of a pretty close quarter final from SVB's run to the world title last year. Is that a repeat of SVB's last U.S. Open win? Oh, the yeah. The final, so right? Yeah. 16 was the last time you won, yeah. Yeah. That was against Chang Jong Lin. Yeah, I know, because that's the two guys that knocked me out of the tournament. I got oh, to the final four of the winner's side. Uh, had a little flashback. Chang beat me 11-9 on the final four of the winners, and then SVB dusted me off on the loser's side. So won the opening rack, lost all of the next six. But Do Taekien has taken that to get back to 6-2. But John Morrow, who I mentioned there, was 9-0 up on Roland Garcia. Unless you're the one handing it out, I don't think anyone really wants to see too many whitewashes, and we're not going to see one there. Roland Garcia has got it back to 9-2. Daniel Masio, 3-2 up on Wu Kun Lin. And this is John Morrow. He's uh, looking to wrap it up now and close out a 10-2 win. Mickey Krause has won the opener against the defending champion, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Robbie Capito, 3-1 up on Jeremy Sose. Mieszko Fortunski. Just ahead of Omar El Shaheen at 9 8 now. Sanyan Pelovanovic does indeed lead Tyler Starr 3 2. Fedor Gorst has re established a bit of control in his match against Billy Thorpe. Gorst now leading 8 4. 2 all between Alban Ocean and Ralph Suke. Chris Reinhold 8 4 ahead of Darren Appleton. Ryuki Oi leading Fitham Haradinaj 8 3. And that brings you right up to date. Back here at 6 2 to Woodward. Again, you can see not that possess quite the power of some of the other players. Very accurate on the hit on the one. Got the one down. Decent spread. Got a tough shot on the two, but definitely one he'll attack with. Oh, no, the seven came down in the way. Didn't see that with the balls rolling at the end. So maybe doesn't attack here. Maybe bangs the two around trying to utilize... We'll let the referee finish here. Try to utilize the 8 and 9 as some kind of cover for the cue ball. 
So back to John Morrow, who has arrived, it seems, at the winning moment. And so John Morrow, the 34-year-old Canadian who lost his opening match here this week against Otekien, is in the last 32 after beating Roland Garcia 10-2. He'll now play Robbie Capito or Jeremy Sose. Okay, I was thinking the two was open. The referee had to move the seven to get at the rack. So now definitely a shot he should attack with. Right, got a little jacked up. He's got a little the left side of the cue ball, so he needs to draw to pinch off the three to hold for the pink four. But you see a little more confidence in that stroke. Definitely, that's the sort of shot where a lack of confidence can really be shown up. Who's your pick then to go on a surprise run? And I know who you're going to say, actually. You do? I, well, I think I do. Yeah, well, you mean like a, a surprise one? Yeah, well, like you were saying to me earlier. Well, I think he's already made that surprise if I think who you're, you're thinking about. You're thinking I'm going to say Chris Reinhold, That's I think. exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm from the pool hall, Michael, so I yeah. can you know, kind of see these things coming. But, um, yeah, I think Chris is, Chris is doing his thing. He could certainly do it, but you know, a player that's been out here lately, I think Angflot could be a guy that that uh, that makes some noise and maybe gets into a, a big semifinal. And he's yet to start his match against Honus Suto Camino. Yeah, Chris Reinhold, just for anyone who hasn't made the connection, he's played in the Moscone Cup under two different names because he was Reinhold in the second year. He'd been Chris Robinson the year before, and I believe it was taking his stepfather's surname that was it, wasn't it? Nice tribute to his relationship with his stepfather that he made that move. Yeah, and a little more opened up with the swing now from Kian. And yeah, Chris, uh, like I said, he, a lot of people wouldn't do what he did. Consciously took five, six months off competing in the biggest events to really get his head right, you know, and not and more of his game right as well. But that's a hard thing to do. Okay, the speed, this cue ball is going to get near, near the rail. So, a bit of a tester. Well, we were talking at the start of the rack about perhaps signs of a little bit of growing confidence. A nice break and run. We'll boost him further in that respect. And it looks as though that's exactly what he's going to do. Now you saw in a similar nine, Skyler elevate and kind of hit downward on this. Usually if your nerves are high, you'll kind of jack up instead of rolling the ball in. You don't feel like hitting the ball lightly. So again, you'll kind of elevate the back end of the cue and hit downward on the cue ball. Shot wasn't guaranteed, but the break and run is completed. Two in a row for Dote Kien. He's back to 6 3. Now, Gerson Martinez, who we saw playing for Peru at the World Cup this summer. Indeed, we saw him on the main table here yesterday against Eric Roberts. Well, he's won the first against Yanni Uski. Lee Van Cortiza has also won the first rack against Jesus Atencio. Jovan Bustamante has won the first rack against Miguel Silva. And let me just break off from updating you on those scores to take you over to table seven, where Chris Reinhold needs this nine ball to complete a 10-4 win over the former US Open winner, Darren Appleton. Well done. Oh, wow. Well, what can you say about that, JJ? Yeah, I didn't see that coming. and Obviously just miss hit the cue ball a little bit with a bit more draw. Maybe caught the nine a little full to the pocket and lost the cue ball. So that match definitely not over. Okay, you can say the same about this one as well because Dote Kien is back to 6-3. Oh, yeah. Oh, now 6-4. Well, how quickly this has turned around. 
the golden break for Dote Kien. And having been 6-1 down only about 10 minutes ago, suddenly now he's within two. Yeah, the cue ball came across, just shaved the top of the nine, cutting it towards the corner. Well, it's all happening in the last few minutes. We saw Reinhold scratching, importing the winning nine ball, and then the golden break here. OK, yeah. so let's look at some other scores then. Mickey Krause now 2-0 up against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Wu Kun Lin and Daniel Masio level at 3 all. Robbie Capito still 3-1 up on Jeremy Sose. Sanyan Pelovanovic leading Tyler Steyer 4-2 on table two. Federal Gorst still 8-4 up on Billy Thorpe. And uh, Naoki Oi 8-4 ahead of Fitham Haradinaj. I think that was the score the last time we checked in on that one as well. I'll tell you one thing for that's positive for Chris on that mistake is he wasn't unhappy the way he hit it, hit the ball. He just maybe misjudged where he was at with the shot. So, you know, other than, of course, not finishing the match. But mentally, he should be okay from there, especially knowing Chris. The problem is, you know, you give a guy like Daz a little extra life, and they usually will take as much advantage of it as the table allows them to. A couple different ways to play safe. We'll get a better look here in a moment. I kind of like edging the two and coming behind the six, seven. You're so close. You should be pretty accurate. Yeah, I don't know. He's going to move the two down table and bring the cue ball behind the six, seven. The problem is the cue ball might not get there and you're leaving him a jump and bring the two near the three. So we'll see. See how the cue ball wants to die right there, Michael? That full hit, it's not like your club table. It just doesn't want to come down table. And even if he got the two down there, he was going to leave a pretty doable cut, uh, uh, look at the two or a jump uh, or a kick of some sort. Shane Van Bonen is just to our right there on the practice table. He's been there for, it seems like, all day so far. And that's just what he does. And, you know, look at the career he's had as a result. Yeah, he likes hitting balls. He feels like it's the right thing to do, keeps him. Of course, he. a lot of people ask of his attention as well, right? So, you know, he's trying to stay focused. He knows he can do that there. And, you know, to be fair, Shane knows that, uh, and he'll tell you that, you know, he needs to hit balls. You know, that's that's what he feels like. And by the way, his opponent, Chang Jong Lin, here in just a little while, he was pretty much over there the same, <laughs> hitting a lot of balls. And now what feels like a huge game in this match here, Michael. Yeah, it was looking like a no contest, wasn't it? Don't take Kien was playing some really bad shots. Woodward was picking off the mistakes and doing pretty much everything right himself. And all of a sudden, a contest has broken out. Meanwhile, Tyler Steyer on table two. He's just got back to one behind against Sanyan Pelovanovic at 4-3. So he's already won more racks than he did when they met earlier in the tournament. And I don't know if you remember the real first shot that Schuyler played trying to open those balls. And yeah. That's where it kind of started to turn around a little bit. Fell a little behind this, so he's going to have to hold the cue ball up with a little draw spin. Good thing he's kind of going towards the six, so. This is the type of shot, though. Don't take your eye off the object ball. Is it, oh, is he going to try and rub the nine here? Wow. Sorry. I think I just mistook Sandin Pelovanovic for Tyler Steyer. It was actually Pelovanovic at the table. Yeah, if you don't get to see the head. Similar builds yeah. from the two guys. and. So it's 5-2 there now. Steyer has not got one behind. Yeah, this is a little awkward. He's going to try and pull the ball, which is correct. Of course, he knocked the 9 in position where the 7 isn't available in the lower corner. So now he's looking at how, if I come off of this, how am I going to bump it 
Can I draw by it, which isn't the easiest? Main things with these shots is don't let uh, your future, you know, shot on the seven, let you take your eye off the six here. Like he's not going to get snookered here. He's definitely going to bump it some kind of way. He's going to produce something, right? So make sure you commit to that green six. Super nice. Yeah, well, this is impressive, isn't it? Because he was in total control at 6 1. He's been pegged back to 6 4. He's just had a golden break thrown at him. And uh, this has not been easy what he's done here. Seems as though he's managed to just focus in on the job and not on the way the match has turned around over the last quarter of an hour or so. And a couple of shots' time. He should be within three of a place in the last 32. Yeah, and I'll tell you, the setting, of course, the U.S. Open and wanting it, but the conditions, I think, are grabbing Skyler's attention and realizing he can't t take a shot off, and that's no matter what the score is. Okay, so having lost three in a row, Skyler Woodward has reasserted himself there. Nicely done in that rack. Wasn't straightforward by any means. Bottom line is, though, he leads 7-4. Feels like we've been waiting for a long time for Mickey Krause to really make that breakthrough, get that real deep run in a big event, get a big win over a top player. Well, he's off to a very good start against the holder, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, leading 3-0. Daniel Maciol is just ahead of Wu Kun Lin at 4-3. Robbie Capito leads Jeremy Sose of the US, 4-1. Fedor Gorst on the hill now. He's won the 13th rack to make it 9-4 against Billy Thorpe. Alvin Ocean and Ralph Suke were 2 all last time we checked. Ocean has now pulled away to 4-2. Nayuki, Nayuki Oi looking for two more against Fitham Haradinaj. That one is 8-5. Jovan Bustamante 1-0 up on Miguel Silva. Levan Cortez are leading 2-0 against Jesus Atencio of Venezuela. And Gerson Martinez, as I was saying, 1-0 up on Jan Ioski. Victor Zielinski just starting against Winan Tan. Back here. Woodward hoping that he'll soon be finishing off. Yeah, he's getting to where he's, you know, hitting the one a lot of different places and the cue ball threatening a scratch on the last few breaks for Schuyler. So he's got to shore that up. Didn't get an update on table seven. So assuming Chris Reinhold went ahead after that mistake at, at nine to four, went ahead and took that match down. Yeah, that is now over, 10-5 for Chris Reinhold. So he will now be playing a former world champion in the next round. Just don't yet know who it's going to be because he'll face the winner of that Ocean Suke match. Okay, another huge opportunity here. He's had a lot of nice opening shots Kian has in this match, and now he's starting to take advantage. Pretty good there, a little over the five, not terribly bad, but he's probably going to have to draw the ball to that gap between the four and eight to get at the red three. And then from there, things will start to open up. I think Daniel Massiol is, is another kind of sneaky name that, that plays so solid and maybe gets overlooked a little too often. He lost his first match in this event as well, if I remember correctly, and went through a tough road on the loser's side. Really nice there, sliding over perfectly. Now he can hold for the pink four in the left middle. Well, it is quite definitely Sanyan Pelovanovic at the table, over on table two. That's four racks in a row. A player from Bosnia and Herzegovina. And yeah, and they, I'm title. sorry, Michael. No, I was just going to confirm the score. 6-2 now. Yeah, and, you know, early in the match, it seemed there were some safety battles and whatnot, but uh, now I haven't seen Tyler at the table here in some time, so... Sanjin got the break working and a pretty decent lead. Okay, another one you can't take your eye off. He looks like he's going all the way to the top rail with the cue ball. 
It's amazing how everything's changed. The speed's gotten better. You know, he's hitting the ball with a little more conviction. He wanted a little more out of that cue ball, but should be okay. Stars and stripes. Two players there who hope to be playing under that flag in every sense in the Moscone Cup. Well, we know Skylar Woodward is already there. Tyler Starr playing for his place. Okay, I think he was trying to kind of like kill the cue ball and get kind of straight on the six to where he could draw back. Now he's got to make a decision. Do I just come out to the middle of the table, take on the cut shot? Do I screw the cue ball back? Couple rails, drawing it into closer position on the brown seven. Good thing is for Kian, it seems like whatever decision he makes, uh, he's back in that, you know, where he's going to execute. So. Uh, he's going to get a kiss on the eight. Is he going to get enough speed? Now, good thing he's right-handed. This may help. Yeah, that light little flick off the eight. Any heavier, he probably doesn't get into position. Here comes the moose head. I know you're not on board with that term, Jeremy, but I'm determined to make it my legacy to the game. No, I'm all right with it. Yeah, it's like perfect speed, Michael. Yeah, really well played. Sometimes when a player is just a long way behind in a match, gets to a point where there's almost nothing left to lose and they know they've just got to free up their mind a bit, it can be the start of something and perhaps that's what's happening here. And so, having been 6-1 down, Dote Kien is going to make it four of the last five racks. And it feels like this transformation in the match hasn't taken very long. Of course, having a golden break along the way helps in that regard. So Skylar Woodward's lead is now reduced to just two racks once again at 7-5. Mickey Krause continuing to dominate against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. The defending champion is now 4-0 down. 4-all between Wu Kun Lin and Daniel Maciol. Robbie Capito leads Jeremy Sose 4-1. Still 4-2 for Alban Ocean against Ralph Suke. Nayuki Oi has finally arrived at the hill against Fitham Haradinaj. Haradinaj is the German player who beat FSR in the UK Open earlier in the year. So 9-5 to Oi. Honosuto Camino and Emil Andre Gangflo just getting started in their match. One all now between Miguel Silva and Jovan Bustamante. Jesus Atencio has won the third rack to close the 2-1 behind against Lee Van Corteza. Winan Tan has taken the first against Viktor Zelinski. Gerson Martinez now 3-0 up on Janioski. Back to table one. Oh, lucky with the cue ball there. That was definitely... Going in that left middle. So sometimes the kisses save you. It's not always a bad thing. And I tell you, we saw Gerson yesterday struggle, right, in, in that match, even though he got a win. But then I paid attention to his scores, and they were much, uh, very comfortable scores to get into this final 64. So turning things around. I think he's going to end up having his hands full in that match, though. I was going to ask, they have Moose? In, in Ireland? They have what? Moose. You said moose head. <laughs> like you called it the moose head. Like, uh, oh, right. Like maybe you're pretty familiar with moose? No, no. I'm a man uh, of the world, Jeremy. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I, mean, I know what the pyramids are, but I've never been to Egypt. Yeah, I got you. Uh, somewhere near Cairo, right? Do we have? Do we have any moose? I'm just trying to think. Would they be in any of the sort of public parks or zoos or anything? They're not native to Ireland anyway. Yeah. Well, I know Great Britain compared to America when it comes to, you know, a little more in the wilderness. Uh, not near as many animals. No bears. Uh, I think squirrels and y'all might have raccoons maybe. I'm not sure. We saw one last night here right out the front door having a little bite. You, you saw what? A raccoon about oh, okay. 15, 10 feet from us just sitting down. I think he got him a little AC burger and, and was going at it. All right, difficult little roll out here because the two's next to the rail. So coming off one side or the other can be a little funny. Hard to contain the two on the bottom end. And Skyler's pretty savvy when it comes to these push-out situations. Uh, so if he passes it back, and I don't th see anything I'm in real love with. Did you really give the raccoon a bit of burger? No, it had its own already. But <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I was telling my wife, which she knew this already, but we used to have a poker game, and we'd always cater out for food on the first wave, you know, and then the game would last a while, and we'd end up firing up the grill, and as soon as we fired up the grill, we'd have this same raccoon come out of the ditch, and we'd all hand feed him. It was awesome, really. They're, they're actually, if you're there to help them, they're not that bad. Okay, that's what I saw. It was always going to be tough to get a snooker and a good pass from Skyler. He's just got to back it up with one heck of a shot. I probably here I simplify it and just try and roll across into the 6-7, taking a chance. With the four over the side, you just need to get some kind of look at the three. Now he's queuing down. He's trying to avoid the 6-7. Oh, real clean. Again, he seems to have put the situation out of his mind. The fact that he's suddenly in a close match that looked like being an absolute landslide early on. And that's the sort of shot that I might end up looking back on and saying that was the moment where he started to really rest back proper control of this match. Well, it's also what I was saying earlier. When you start to like piece it together, go through your routine, then you start to depend on it, and then you start to like it. You know, like it just settles you, um, and you kind of start to ignore a little bit of the situation. Skyler keeps that up. Uh, it's going to be tough to deal with for a long time. Okay, the six is a little tight, so he's going to get proper angle on the five. That's what he's looking at to come up the right side of the table to play the green six in the upper left in a couple shots. I don't know what's going on on table four that's led to this. But it's Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, the defending champion, the world champion, the world number one, nil, Mickey Krause, five. Well, if you looked at uh, his scores through the tournament, Mickey, right, besides the match he lost to FSR, there were some very convincing wins. And, you know, we've always said it, Mickey, a very talented player. He puts in a lot of time. You know, sometimes the younger kids for one reason or another, just, just uh, you know, it takes a little longer. But he's putting it together this week, and so far, looks like a guy that may move on to the final 32. I think that would be the uh, biggest result, really, of the tournament so far. Yes, we know that Van Boney went down to a surprise defeat yesterday, but it didn't eliminate him from the tournament. Well, this must be super tricky if he hasn't pulled the trigger on it yet. And I don't know if it's position or just simply making the six. I think it's got to be making the six is the issue. 
Now, does he want to soft spin it with a little left? You wouldn't think so. Okay, cheated the pocket a little bit there. couple of racks that he's won including this one he's had to work very hard for them had to work harder in this match than he looked as though he was going to need to about half an hour ago but Skylar Woodward has gone three clear again two more and he will be through to the next round of the US Open he leads Dote Kien eight racks to five so I've given you that extraordinary score in the Sanchez Ruiz match four all still between Wu Kun Lin and Daniel Masio Robbie Capito leads Jeremy Sose 4-1, Sanyan Pelovanovic has won five in a row now against Tyler Steyer, that's 7-2, although the American is at the table with a very good chance to win Rack 10. Alban Ocean continuing to ease away from Ralph Suke, it's 5-2 there now. Fitum Haradinaj is battling back in this match against Noyuki Oi. The German has got it back to 9-7, but Oi... There's a chance here to win the match. Emil Andre Gangflo has won the first against Honus Suto Camino. Miguel Silva, 2 1 up on Hoven Bustamante. Lee Van Corteza leading Jesus Atencio by that score as well. 1 all between Victor Zelinski and Winan Tan. And Gerson Martinez has now made it 4 0 against Janioski. And I'll tell you, the way this match has gone, so many different things throughout the match. You know, first off, when your opponent's struggling in a big moment, that sometimes can make you struggle. We've seen that, and Skyler fought his way through that, got his head strong using that routine. Had one kind of, you know, so-so shot. Kian's taking advantage, and now Skyler working through some tough ones uh, when the real heat's on. He's certainly on for Tyler Steyer, but he's got one back there against Sanyan Pelovanovic, back to 7-3. All right, just uh, what looks like this shot in position on the 7 for Oi with the 8-9 in a pretty doable position. Boy, I'm always pulling for the Americans, but this guy I'm always pulling for, period. I'll tell you, one of the greatest guys you'll ever meet. And it just makes you feel good when you just <laughs> are next to him, really. I think he's all over the place, you know, with the um, jet lag and everything. I saw him yesterday sitting in one of the restaurants, and he looked like he was just bewildered with tiredness and time difference and all the rest of it, but doesn't seem to be having much impact on his performances. Yeah. Oi was a semi-finalist the first time the U.S. Open was played in Atlantic City two years ago. And he's got every chance of getting to a similar stage again. He's in the last 32 after finally getting past Fitham Haradinaj by 10 racks to 7. Yeah, I was up early. We had to do a little work. And I think I walked down around 7.50 maybe. And saw Oi drinking a coffee down there and just uh, buying his time to his match. And, and, the, and the room opened to get a little practice. I'm not sure he's been to bed all week. He just seems to always be somewhere around the hotel. Yeah, he's so much fun, though. And he really, really uh, offers himself to everyone, you know. And, and uh, it's, it's amazing because, you know, his English is better now, of course. But he would sit there and really want to understand what you're saying to him, no matter if you're a fan or, or you know, any type of patron to the game. You might just have noticed Gerson Martinez there in the distinctive diagonal red and white stripes of Peru. As I said, he's 4-0 up against Yanni Uski. Skylar Woodworth looking for two more racks to advance at the US Open. Yeah, he's starting to get a little quicker with that backswing. A little better hit on the one, but... And I'm trying to see there. To me, the hit on the one didn't look that bad. It did end up high, and 
You know, Kian with a very difficult situation. He can't roll out up table. A triple combination on the one five six may be playable. This is big trouble. He may have to roll out to a kick shot. Well, he can get a piece of the one, but can he do really anything with it? Yeah, difficult situation here. Looks like he's going to try and do something off the one, but what? I do not know. Looks like he's queuing a lot of right spin, trying to maybe clip it and go up the table, leave something long, but then things will be in Skyler's hands. Oh, this is a smart shot. I didn't know he could catch that much of the one, and whether he gets the snooker or not, I really commend that play. At least that shot gave him a chance to not only get the snooker, but not to leave something so offensive for Sky. Now Sky, can he can he bank the one and come across it? Kind of bank the one between the seven nine and get to the side rail. That looks a little funny. And I know Tyler Steyer got a game back on his on his side now, trailing seven three. But I really haven't seen him at the table much on table two. Well, I managed to see him at the table and he wasn't even there a few racks ago. But yeah, I know what you mean. Seems to be pretty dominant stuff. Yeah, I guess he may play a mild one here. Just kind of roll the one by the nine. Try and get it on the other side of the four. Oh, he's going to hit it downwards, so he's drawing the ball. I thought he might roll the one and go into the seven with the cue ball and just kind of hold behind the nine four. Wow. Take yeah. the pot. I spotted that, but I thought he's not going to go for that. But boy, he has gone for it. No wonder he's got that cheeky smile that we love so much to see from Skylar Woodward. Yeah, he gave a little look to the crowd. He's feeling it and kind of reminds me of that nine he made in the Moscone last year when he was in such a bad spot. Oh, the place went insane, didn't it? Yeah. And he's looking over to uh, his fellow American there. Did you see that? Did you see that combination I just pulled out? Oh, 100%. I can tell by the way Tyler's <laughs> got a little little grin on his face that uh, he'd rather watch Skyler do something fantastic than keep watching Sanjin run out on him. Two guys who are both great fun to have around. And one of them is one rack away from a place in the last 32. Skyler Woodward really have got such a buzz out of that moment. Well, what a huge rack that was. I mean, you're not going to let off the gas, and you certainly shouldn't, but just to get a little bit of a you know, breathing space, you might say. That was better. A lot better backswing there. All right, we know he's going here, Tyler. Uh, excuse me, Skyler is not backing up on a cross corner, especially one that offer some position on the three and a chance to advance. Just want to keep you across events on table four. Still playing that sixth rack. Mickey Krauts 5-0 up on Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Where are we at with Billy and Fetter? You know, Billy made it's little... over. Oh, it's over already. 10-4 over and out, JJ. Yeah, and I got to believe that was a lot about Fetter Gorston. He's a very determined man trying to get uh, one of these World Nine Ball Tour titles and, of course, the U.S. Open. Yeah, and uh, Gorst at the moment looks like playing Pelovanovic in the next round. He will face the winner of that match. Skyler played the bank with confidence, knowing it's not going to hang on the top side of the pocket, and if he misses it, it comes back over. Now, it is doable, it is cuttable, but it's not easy. 
cue ball is going to have a lot of speed. I think he just comes straight down, tries to come between the five and three, maybe at the five with the cue ball. Carson Martinez continuing his fine start. 5-0 now against Janioski. David Alcady, winner of the European Open in Germany last month, has taken the first rack against BJ Ussery. Player who's forced himself into Moscone Cup contention on the US side. Uh, cleanly struck there from Kian and shows a lot why he's here in this final 64. Shown a lot of resolve, even though he started pretty rough. Hey, ever since those early moments, Ken's been really solid, so, you know, still some work left. Doesn't want to get too far away from the pink four. Wants to come up near it, somewhat anyways. Uh-oh. Oof. Little fortunate. Now he's going to fall long and straight and really only one pocket for the five to the lower right. He knew it right away. And after the bridge shot he made a couple games ago, he's a little upset with himself with that one. Okay, I think he's pretty good at the angle, though, to pinch it back a little bit, except a little bit of a longer shot on the five, but not too much. If he gets a foot out of the cue ball here, Michael, that'd be nice. Kind of feared that. Not going to leave things easy for Sky, though, with only one real pocket for the five. So. Four playable, but not a whole lot of angle. Does he jack up and pop this? I think that's Skyler, what he'd normally, yeah, there. Little elevation. Just trying to stun two rails kind of over where he's standing now, a little above the side. And just take the shot. Nice, he fell. You know, kind of got off the rail with the cue ball there, though. Makes the shot probably 30 to 40 percent easier. Knowing it's not easy at all. It's getting cleaner for Skylar Woodward. Overall, I think he's going to be very pleased with his performance. It's sort of the ideal display to have at the last 64 stage. Played well, and also you still feel there's room for a bit of improvement as the rounds go on. Yeah, and he withstood a nice comeback from, from Kian, you know, mentally. Stuck to his guns. Yeah, we've had a bit of everything in this match. A golden break, a cracking combination. A great recovery from Dote Kien. We've even had a raccoon eating a burger. But in the end, what we have is victory for Skylar Woodward, who pulls away from 7-5 to win by 10 racks to 5.